Well, hi, this is David Harms with India Partners, and it's the last day of the Red Light Rescue Campaign going on here at American Family Radio, and I want to thank you for the amazing amount of generosity that's already been expressed by those of you who have called and decided to make a difference by donating and by praying for the work of India Partners. If you haven't heard, well, today is the last big day of the event. Uh, The number to call is 800-678-9962. Seven dollars and eight cents is what it takes to provide a day of safety, rescue, and care in a safe house in Mumbai, India, for girls that are coming out of the red light district. So, thank you so much. I think the the simple fact is there is now something you can do about this issue of trafficking. We become more aware of it, but the concern that I always tend to hear is that well, I don't know what to do. How do you actually impact and affect this issue in a positive way with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, this is it. This is an opportunity to provide time in a safe house, a day really, for $7.08, that allows you to know that you're actually doing something, not just being aware of it, but doing something to protect and bring safety and rescue and care to the girls coming out of the red light district. So thank you. Please keep calling. There is time for you to jump in, but it is the last day. So 800-678-9962, 800-678-9962 or AFR.net. I hope that we are all uh, rallying uh, to support this incredible ministry, but I want to point something out that David said, and he was on the program last week, and I thought it was er, uh, earlier in the week, and I'm glad that he brought this up. The $7.08 per day, uh, it, it's, it almost sounds like they're rescuing these women and children, and they're, they're, they're putting them up for a day at the safe house. That's not the case at all, and David made that clear on the program. The fact is that they will be there for as long as they need to be, months if it takes that, uh, to you know, help them to understand the support they have in our Lord and Savior, help them to understand how important it is uh, for them to come out of this lifestyle. So they're, So... It's just that that's what it costs. So if you give seven dollars and eight cents, that's wonderful because that you know uh, when that when that day's up, somebody else's day uh, money is going to kick in and so on and so forth. So we sure hope that you will come alongside <clears throat> us and contribute to this ministry that we are partnering with, with uh, India Partners. And again, you can go to afr.net and click on that logo or. You can call 800-678-9962. It's the last day. I really hope that you will uh, participate if you've procrastinated and you've heard uh, these spots and uh, all of us talking about this for the week. I hope today is the day you'll do it. And it is uh, 800-678-9962. So give a call or go to AFR.net, and I sure appreciate it. We are going to go uh, to the phones. Right now, all the indices pretty much flat, so we'll see how that uh, goes when we open, when the market opens, so we'll watch that. But let me go to the phones and go to Rick. Rick calling us from Texas. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, um, my uh, IRA. Mm-hmm. When can you withdraw from an IRA at what age without a penalty? 59 and a half. 59 and a half, okay. Uh, the reason I was asking is my wife got a couple of bonuses last year that no taxes were taken out of. Mm-hmm. So if I put the money, you know, 5500 in the IRA, if I need it for any reason, I can withdraw it just like a regular one of my, my other accounts, right? Co- correct. Um, you as long as you know she's fifty nine and a half. No, but if it's in my account. Oh, put- okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you can withdraw. You have to pay tax on it, of course. You know that. Right, but I'm going to retire, so my income this year is going to be a whole lot less than what it was last year. So the taxes will be a whole lot less yeah. on that fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but 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 here's what I want to uh, point out to you, Rick. So your wife gets this bonus. She's going to get ten ninety nine on it at the end of the year, right? At the end of this yeah. year, I'm talking about. So she's going to get ten ninety nine. You're going to have to. 
Oh, it was last year it happened. Okay. So she should have gotten a 1099. You're going to file that? Yeah, it bumped, yeah, it bumped her, her, you know, her salary up and bumped us into a higher tax bracket. I'm trying to okay. drop it out of that tax bracket. So you, if you put it in your IRA, you're paying tax twice on that money. So because you're, you're paying tax on it as she's 1099 at a, at a, at a high tax rate. You put it in your IRA. Yes, you get a little bit of a deduction for doing that, but then you withdraw it later. You got to pay tax again on it. So it wouldn't be a good idea to put it in an IRA account unless it's a Roth IRA account. Uh, it wouldn't be a good idea to put it into an IRA account. Um, if you want to put it into a Roth IRA account, um, you know, that's okay. But I, I wouldn't put it into a regular IRA account, and you're going to pay more tax on that money if you do that. But if you're filing jointly and you're jumping into a higher tax bracket with the the five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and if you take it and put it in a traditional IRA, doesn't it drop your your total income by the five thousand dollars? Yes. It drops it, 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 it drops your total income, but you're still going to have to, it, it's not going to be the same as, because it, it's not a dollar for dollar drop, drop from a tax standpoint. It is from a, an adjusted gross income standpoint, but it's mm-hmm. not going to be from a tax standpoint. So if you do your tax yourself, for instance, what I would tell somebody if they were doing it themselves and using TurboTax, I would yeah. say run your TurboTax without the 5000 see what you pay in taxes. Run it with the 5000 see what you pay in taxes. The difference is not going to be as significant enough to offset the taxes totally that you would pay someday down the road when you withdraw it out of your IRA. So the best thing to do is just run it both ways if you have that ability to do that. Right, and, so we did it and it said that it was better to do it that way, to put it in the IRA. Okay, well, then, I, you know, because so much of it is based on all of your other de- uh, deductions. So right. if it's better to do that, then that's fine. I would, I, that, my only concern is that you don't pay, end up paying more taxes, which right. is very, very that's possible. What we're wondering about too, because I mean, you know, I've got the money to pay it, but if I, if I can save on my taxes by putting it in my, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I've got emergency funds and everything, but if I can put it in there it basically save the money by putting it in there and then taking out, you know, whenever, I don't plan on taking that account soon, but if I had to for some reason, I could still take it out now. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, again, if it works out that it's less expensive from a tax standpoint, then then that's fine. You know, and, and, if, you're, and if you've done that and it works out that uh, because of the lower tax bracket and such um, that you're, that you're going to have, <clears throat> then that's fine. I just want to, I would just want to be careful of that. Um, uh, on the other side of that, and thank you for that, Rick. The other, the, uh, the other side of that is I don't ever rec- rec- recommend anybody that is over 59 and a half. I'm not sure what the advantage is other than purely from a tax standpoint of paying less taxes because you get the deduction. I don't believe there's any advantage in putting money into an IRA account at that point other than a Roth IRA account because t- the, the tax deferral takes about 22 years to make up number one. Secondly, you're going to have to withdraw that. Third is that's more money that at some point in time, you've got to get out of your IRA for fear of leaving it into your estate. <clears throat> it's okay to leave it to your spouse, but it's not okay to leave it into your estate. And I always recommend that people should try to be withdrawing out of their IRA account anyway and moving it over to their savings. So all of those things have to be considered anytime you do that. So, you know, from, from my standpoint, I say put it into a Roth IRA and grow a tax deferred or tax free. I'm sorry, grow a tax free and now pay the taxes, even though 
uh, you know, and be done with it. It's not going to, it can't be that significant uh, of a tax bill that uh, might not be more advantageous to pay it now and have the tax-free growth um, for the life of that Roth IRA account. Let me go to Adrian in Mississippi. Hey, Adrian. Hello. <clears throat> I uh, am retiring, uh, just retired, and I've got a traditional IRA, about $150,000 in the stock market. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have an income of maybe a thousand dollars out of that. What should I do with that? Well, the the thing you have to do is make sure that everything that it's in is producing uh, is producing income. So you've got to make sure that you have it in some things that you're you're generating income from. the The problem, the real problem, is with that scenario is when you look at a hundred and fifty. Uh, thousand, you know, you're going to have to draw, you know, somewhere around, um, 8%, um, eight or 9%. I'm doing, trying to do the math in my head, but eight or 9% of that 150,000 on an annual basis, that 12,000 that's coming out of that. The difficulty is you, in, in order for you not to run out of money, you've got to be relatively convinced that you're going to make year in and year out. If you're drawing, let's say it's eight and a half, nine percent, then you've got to make sure that you're making that every single year and you're not starting to dip into principal. So whatever you do, you've got to have something that not only is producing maybe four or five percent as far as annual yield goes, But you also have to hope that you're getting some growth in those positions that you're in. Now, the downside to that, Adrian, and the real scary part is, in order to accomplish that, you've got to put all 150,000 to work for you in the market. So, in other words, it all has to be exposed to the risk of a downturn. Now, the, the real issue with that is... That if there is a downturn, so you have everything exposed to the market, the market goes down, your 150 goes to 125, and you're still drawing now the $1,000 a month on a portfolio that is down. You know, so you're selling things now that are, are, are you know, cheap and are down. And so it's going to make the 125,000 that you have a lot harder to recover back up to 150 and beyond. And that's usually where where we get in trouble. Now, we can almost say with 100% certainty that between now and the next 10 years there is going to be a significant downturn in the market. And even if it's only for a year, there's going to be. There's going to be another recession. I mean, it's just even if we weren't in the economic mess that we're in in the country right now, we could still rest assured that we're going to have this year where we're going to have a downturn. So my, my fear always is in, in, in any situation is am I going to outlive my money? So I'm not concerned about, yes, you'll, you'll get maybe to the next 20 years. My concern is, you know, the last thing you want to do when you're 80 is to be running out of money. So you just need to take a very, very long and hard look at that uh, because of the 100% exposure you're going to need um, to have on that account in order to try to get your, you know, eight and a half, nine percent return, you know, on that money on a very consistent basis. So there is no, you know, it would be a piece of cake if you could get a 20 year CD at nine percent. Wouldn't be an issue. You just do it, you know, but uh, and you wouldn't gain much. You wouldn't gain much growth. But, you know, at the end of the 20 years, you still have your 150 and hopefully you could do that again at, at that time. But there's no such animal out there right now that's going to guarantee 
that kind of percentage year in and year out for an extended period of time, which means you have to do what you've suggested, be 100% in the market and, and you know, hope that you continue to have some growth. Is that going to be safe enough to have it in the market, you think? No, I don't think that. I don't, I don't, um, I would not want to see you or anybody, uh, if, if you're, if you're totally dependent upon this money, not totally, but, you know, obviously you got social security, maybe, maybe something else, but if you're dependent on this money, it is not safe to, uh, put that money a hundred percent in the market to some things that you, you have to be a little bit more aggressive uh, and, and, and hoping for growth. I, I would be concerned. I wouldn't be concerned about doing that. To be honest with you, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to tell you it would be, it would be fine. I don't think it would be. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Adrian. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be of more help to you on that other than just to try to give, you know, we always have to look at the downside scenarios, folks. That, and we have a line open, 866-300-9298. We always have to look at the downside. Let's not let's not ever get caught up again in looking at only the upside. Listen, it's irrelevant, the upside, because in an up market, everything goes up. It's a great thing, and everybody looks smart, and everybody feels good, and all those kinds of things. So it's not even worth spending a whole lot of time thinking about. But what you have to think about is when it goes down, what's that going to do to me? Whenever you're drawing, I'm going to say more than 5%, It becomes very, very difficult, very, very difficult. Now, if Adrian could say, you know what, I could draw, you know, maybe I only need to draw $600, that's very doable, and that would be okay. 866-300-9298. We'll be right back. 